this is David McKittrick from Blue Marble Geographics, and today we're going to take a look at an interesting workflow, an interesting data visualization workflow in Global Mapper for rendering data or one of the characteristics of your data in a three dimensional context. Essentially, what we're going to do is create a 3D thematic map. And we've actually got a couple of different examples we're going to, to show you uh, in terms of how this works. Um, the first is based on property information. You see this map on my screen right now. If I use my info tool and I select one of the properties, you can see all of the property information is noted here in the attribute table. I'm going to scroll down towards the bottom. Uh, the one that we're going to look at specifically is the value per square foot. We're going to represent that visually on the map. We're initially going to do that in a 2D context using a standard color pattern to represent uh, variations on this value. But then we want to take that and represent that in 3D. We're going to use a, a kind of an interesting trick in Global Mapper to have these uh, values represent the extrusion of the features from, from the surface. So um, the initial setup, uh, we'll assign some colors here. Let me deselect. Um, we're going to go to the options for the layer. You can double click on any layer, just open up the options dialog box. And specifically, we're going to look at the area styles. And this is, again, just to give us a visual representation of the data, aside from just these unfilled polygons. We're going to apply styling based on that attribute. So I'm going to choose from my list. I'm going to choose the value per square foot. And to save myself a little work here, I'm going to go to a pre-created version of this style. I've got a, a file I'm going to load. And we'll click open. And you'll see some colors assigned here. I'll click the apply button so we can take a look. If you're ever, if you're doing this this type of work where you're visualizing data on the screen, it's a good idea to keep this dialog box open. Maybe you need to tweak some of the settings in here to make the colors appear slightly differently. When you're happy with the results, you can click OK. And we now have a visualization of distribution of property values again per square foot. What we're going to do next is we're going to assign each of those uh, values to be the elevation of that feature. Now you have to use your imagination a little bit here. We're obviously not talking about actual elevation, but we're essentially applying that, that are assuming that the value per square foot is actually a an altitude or a Z or Z value, and that will allow it to be extruded in the 3D view. This is a very simple setting. Uh, again, back in the options dialog box for this particular layer. Double clicking once again. This time going to elevations. Now again, I should stress we're not dealing with literal elevations, but what we're going to do here is we're going to tell Global Mapper that the value that I just w was working with visually, the value per square foot, is actually a height value. And if I scroll to the bottom, um, value per square foot. This can be done with any numeric value. Anything that's measurable or quantifiable can be assigned to be the Z or Z value in a layer. Um, obviously, we're dealing with meters as different units of measure here, and you might want to tweak this a little bit depending on the value itself. How much extrusion do you want? Again, noting that we're not actually dealing with a, a measured meter value, but this is just going to give us a way to relatively define how much extrusion there will be. Meters works in my case. We'll click OK. Obviously, nothing has changed from the top-down view. If I pop up my 3D view, we should see, if all goes according to plan, a version of this data in a 3D context. My 3D view is just taking a while to refresh here, but when it does, you'll see now I have a very interesting visualization of the properties in the er in this area, represented by the. Um, the uh, value, the actual value of, of the property per square uh, per square foot in this case. So it's almost like a graph, a 3D geographically based graph of my data. And again, any numeric variable can be applied in this way. So a little bit of an interesting alternative to simply the top down top down uh, thematic view. And again, you can use the fly through tool to, to kind of fly through your area, whatever it is, whatever that's, this value happens to be, um, different ways of visualizing it. So that's example number one. Let me close my 3D view. I'm going to show you an alternative workflow, I think. I have another workspace sitting in the background here. And here we have point data. Um, these points happen to represent uh, weather stations. And you may recognize this as the state of California. Once again, with my info tool, if I click on one of these, you'll see we've got a few different weather variables here. Um, um, 
temperature variable is what I'm looking for specifically this precipitation, the value of the precipitation. I'm going to make that, in this case it's not a z value, we're not going to assign this as a height, but the value is going to determine the extent of a 3D model that we will apply to each of these weather stations. In order for me to do this, I need to take a, an existing 3D model and associate it with the points that I've used uh, to represent this. Now, I, I created points, I call them rain because it's precipitation, and I'm going to assign a 3D model, just a simple spherical model, to represent these points in a relative context based on that numeric variable within my 3D view. So, how do I do that? Let's go into configuration, a little wrench or spanner button in the toolbar it up and specifically we're going to the styles area and point styles and I've been here before obviously remembered I was here I this new feature type that I created called rain that's the little blue dots at the bottom of this dialog box you'll see an option to choose a corresponding 3d model uh, by default there will be no 3d model assigned um, I, I should also mention you can also bring in your own 3d models if you have access to uh, a 3d model file that you want to use for for whatever purpose that you're you know, creating this map for absolutely you can do that um, I'm going to use one of the existing models specifically a blue sphere as you can see this is the um, uh, kind of spherical representation in a three-dimensional context and we'll just click OK on that nothing again will change from the top-down view now just as we did with our previous example what I need to do is I need to tell Global Mapper which of the variables is going to determine the scale of that sphere and if you noticed when I had this dialog box open before when we went to elevations there was a section to determine it says the height of the model that's basically the dimensions of the model mine is a sphere so obviously it will be a, a diameter that will be assigned here um, and I could choose what attribute is going to determine the scale uh, again in my case I'm going to use the precipitation I'm interested in rainfall and click OK and again nothing changes from the top-down model a top-down view but in 3D, once again, when this refreshes, you can see we now have a visual representation in a 3D context of the amount of precipitation, the annual precipitation, I believe this was, represented by this scaled spherical model. Now, it's a very generic model. Maybe something a little more realistic might be a raindrop or something of that type. You can be creative in how this is, rep this is uh, represented. But just two examples of taking the concept of thematic mapping visual representation of data, but applying it in a 3D context.